One man who's never nervous is Blue Squares, Alan Alger, of course, who's been with us all throughout the season. Alan, you've been very kind to give us all the charity bet throughout the season. It's been a bit of fun. We're trying to raise some money for charity. What is the latest for that? Well, the latest for that, we're giving you £100 each today to place on this big final if you can find those winners. We've actually priced up the man of the match, but Snods, as you choose that, you're not allowed to pick that one. It's a close one, Al, isn't it? Very close indeed. I think there's £90 in it between the two of you, and the winner will donate to the charity of their choice. £128 between the two of us. So today, Alan has very kindly given us £100. 2 1 Wimbledon have plumped for 11 to 1. Claude Napka, we've just been talking about, 8 to 1 to score first. And Kaid Mohammed, 13 for 2. I, I don't know which way this game's going to go. So I've gone 3 1 Wimbledon at 25 to 1 and 3-1 Luton uh, at 18-1, to one, and I've gone for Walker to score the first goal at 6-1. to one. Alan, we can't call it. How have you called it? Who's the favourite? Well, the punters have really come for Luton this morning. We've had to drift Luton out from 8-5 to five, all the way out to 9-5. to five. They're not touching Wimbledon at all. They all think that Luton are going to win today. And some of the special bets, well, we priced up this, this tie going all the way to penalties. That's what I originally thought. 11 to 1 each side to win on penalties. And you mentioned Kate Mohammed earlier. He's 80 to 1 to net a hat trick as he did in that second leg. Alan, thank you very much indeed. So, the nerves are jangling in the tunnel. The Wimbledon fans and the Luton supporters determined to enjoy the day. But only one of them will be able to do that by the end of tonight. That is what they're looking to get their hands on by the end of the evening. That is their passport into League Two. Which team will be celebrating by just after five o'clock tonight? Steve, I just think it's been a magnificent season, male. What happens? I think we're in for a spectacle. Because the season at Oz and Old with Crawley absolutely running away with the league. With they've done fantastic in the FA Cup. They've been a credit to the league and these two teams as well. I, I've just enjoyed the full season of being associated with this league this season. Here they come then. Who will get their hands on that trophy in the last game of the Blue Square Bet Premier this season? These two teams have played 48 of them. It's been a grueler. One will be elated, one will be devastated. They certainly will, and uh, you're just going out, walking out of the tunnel now, both teams will be sampling the atmosphere, the crowd are in there. There will be a little bit of nerves, but... Football on a Sunday, on a Saturday afternoon, sorry, and uh, being involved in a game like this, he cannot beat it. It's some atmosphere that greets them at the City of Manchester Stadium. One that will just make the butterflies increase that little bit more. The teams that finished second and third in the league. The teams that finished six points apart. Luton, remember, didn't lose to Wimbledon in their two league games. How much that will count for today, only time will tell. Now, the presentation party are on their way. We have David Bernstein, the chairman of the Football Association, formerly, of course, chairman here at Manchester City too. Brian Lee, the chairman of the Football Conference. Mark Jones, the managing director of the Rank Group and Blue Square, and Dennis Strudwick, who's about to lead them on, the general manager of the football conference. They are about to meet the two sets of teams before we have our national anthem. And there is the new FA chairman to meet Danny Cadwell, the Wimbledon skipper. And is this the stage where, as a player, Snods, the butterflies are there and you just want to kick a ball and get it underway? Yeah, you certainly do. You want to uh, shake the hands with the dignitaries and uh, then you want to leave your line and you want to go and get a feel 
sampled the atmosphere. I'll tell you what, first and foremost, you want to hear that whistle go at three o'clock and get into this game. And I suppose as a manager, Steve, they'll be proud to be standing there, Terry Brown and Gary Brabin. Well, they don't want this to go on too long. No, you don't. And it's going to be, it's going to be interesting if, uh, if either manager goes and puts their track suits on. You know, I think Terry will stay suited. Brown's may change, of course, unless he's changing for the day. What is that all about? I've often wondered that with managers. What is that all about? I think it's got to be a bit, you don't change what you do. You know, we were very fortunate to, to win the Ronnie Radford Trophy and, uh, and be at Wembley last week for the cup final. And I was interested to see what Mr Pulis done. And as soon as the anthem and dignitaries had left, he was straight down the tunnel and changed because speaking to him in the week, he wanted to do exactly what he'd done every other game. So, it'd be interested for change, but listen, they, they just want to kick off and, and let the team sit on the game. So do those supporters too. Very shortly, we are going to have our national anthem, which is going to be sung today by Martin Toll. This is the moment. This is what these two teams have worked so hard all season for. This opportunity. One more game to decide which division they will be playing in next season. They know each other so well. There was only six points between them after 46 games. What will be between them? in the next 90 minutes. Team news is very straightforward from both managers, both name unchanged lineups. Wimbledon, of course, from the team that easily overcame Fleetwood in that semi-final second leg. The skipper, Danny Kedwell, got his 25th goal of the season in that game. Kaid Mohamed got a hat-trick, and the last time that he played in a playoff final, he scored the winner to get Bath City promoted. Yeah, Terry Brown not changed his system all season, really. 4-4-2 formation, and a great spine through the team. Seb Brown, terrific keeper Jamie Stewart Stephen Gregory very important figure in the midfield for him and say no more about Danny Kedwell we know how important his goals can be Luton unchanged as well from the team that overcame Wrexham in the two legs although they do have a change on the bench and that's a boost for Gary Brabin Danny Crow is fit enough to take his place in the 16. He, along with Robbie Wilmot and Dan Gleeson, lost in the final at Wembley, at Cambridge, under Gary Brabin. Again, Gary Brabin, very positive formation, 4-3-3. I think the three midfield players are so important to Luton Town. Keith Keane, Lawless and Owls. And also, that they've got plenty of pace, Wilmot, Napka and Walker, the front three. Both these managers have been in a playoff final at this level before and neither tasted victory. That is going to change for one of them today. The Cambridge memories are still in Gary Brabin's mind. It's a huge day for him. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Here I am with the toss. George Pilkerton, Danny Kebbell. Let's see what's happened. Season off. We'll kick off. Okay. Danny, do you win the toss? Okay. We'll kick off. Yeah, I'll kick off, yeah. Any final thoughts? Just full kick-off, Danny, just quickly. Final thoughts, full kick-off? Uh, buzzing, man. All right, thank you. How about you, Steve? No doubt, everybody out there is buzzing at the moment, but only one team will be by the end.